Um, yeah, so that's our last uh, session. Congratulations, everyone. We made it. Woo. I mean, chapter 16 is, uh, we can start with chapter 16. I do not think it's, it's worth taking time into it. Uh, it's kind of it give me the feel like, you know, you can just download uh, the special epidemic app and you do not need to have read the chapters. <laughs> It gives me like this feeling because like basically like it provides you uh, uh, a template and you can pick the um, the receipt we have seen in the in the wrapping and you can just use it. So I kind of feel like I don't know mixed feeling about the chapter the section chapter sixteen, but it's nice. Anyway, so let's go. I uh, will share my screen. This I do not need it. And does it works? Should I share this one? I guess. And this can be more here. What did, did you see? Like a bunch of our studio file? Yes, yes. Okay. So let's increase that. See, this is the word bug that I have. Like it's probably like I have something in one of the beginning of the chapters that make it not working. I have a, a wrong uh, link into it. Anyway. So what we learn in chapter 15 is mostly uh, we discover like DT and digraph, which is more like uh, HTML widget to add to the Chinese app. We are gonna and digraph use XTS uh, object class object. I don't know if you have, you know about them. I know like I know that they exist, but I do not them too much. It's uh, it's an object that design to store uh, time series data, like the name uh, acronym one to me. But we don't go to, I mean, the shutter did not go too much into it. Uh, what's important is like, we see like the workflow of the author when she built a shiny app. If I remember correctly, our workflow is a bit different than the one Adley Wickham is using uh, in Mastering Shiny. Some of you maybe have done this book in the book club previously or uh, Adley starts by basically um, building uh, the layout. This, this, this part is the same, is building the layout of the map. Then uh, in his layout, he will build the input uh, while the routers uh, will start bringing uh, like with no input, then she will add input and reactivity. Like we can, did you see, uh, uh, if I move that here, no, not that, that. This is just like a crappy zoom. Where can I? Zoom, can you move away from here? Yeah, okay. Uh, also here. If you do not know, did, did you know Mermaid Live? It's a great website. I definitely like, like it. Uh, I tried to add it, but I think it's only available in Quarto now. I do not think you, we can add Mermaid in Air Markdown directly. We can add it in markdown file uh, inside GitHub, but I do not think uh, it's available in 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 I mean in um, in Air Markdown. So you need to add it in um, in um, I think it's work only in Quarto now. But I can maybe you know or all with me. You can use it. I think yes, you can uh, you can add it. Well, I. I failed to editing, but anyway, we can check it like this is just like the, so this is our workflow. Yeah, but because first, you, you cannot add it like this. You need to like- Yeah, yeah, I add it like uh, C, PC. Uh, no, this is the shiny app. Uh, where is my, uh, like, uh, uh, I basically like, uh, it need to be like, uh, you need, is, is it something like Mermaid? No. How do you uh, say like the it is a Mermaid? Uh, how do you say like it's Mermaid cut? Okay. Well, I you can just in a in our market markdown and you say um, uh, then then I'll show you later. I'll show you later. Yeah, yeah. It's not it's not it's not that important. Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. The good point is like you can even even if you do not want to like uh, share it, you can still save the code like that and then export any images. But it's less interactive. Uh -huh. So let's go back to the workflow uh, that she used in the book. So she starts 
always with the basic. That's mean like she just basically like, I mean, she just copy past the template. You can also use R Studio. Uh, let's do that. Like, um, so you can just like uh, when you when you decide to build a, a file, you can add a new file and you can add. Uh, do we have like a shiny web app? You can also like just use the shiny web app from R Studio, or you can just build like a quick template. Let's do that. Let's do the proposals. So uh, we'll have to change the name of it, app1.r, and that's it, great. And this is the single version one. So this is a bit more complicated than the one she starts. If we go to the book, she starts with an even simpler version of it. The basically, they're just a UI, a server, and then the render of it. Uh, usually, like uh, if I done that, if I copy that to be sure that it works, copy, probably copy here, go back to my, uh, it's called it app also. I do not, uh, well, anyway, let's do that. It's fine. Escape one. Okay, I will just uh, from this one add um, like something so I know it works into the into the, the pages but yeah basically so she starts with a very simple uh, shiny app uh, file can i rename that um, save us what is it i want it to be called app one and then we can shiny um, run up f one no, this need to be a link, I think. App one that are build line four. App one is not a regular file, so I should rename no, it. Because, no, because line uh, four. are you sure you, that uh, you can add the things? Because usually a shiny app file is just need to be named app dot r you cannot name it differently so that's why you might you might want to make different folders and inside each folder you name the oh, folder. oh yeah I see but what the you file mean. needs to be app dot r because otherwise it doesn't uh find it basically yeah let me check like so it build it here and then i have this if one you did so it, maybe... i don't know if you did i don't know let's try let's try that because it's probably like call another one. Let's see like if it's uh, app one like that, no. And you say app one and app.r. Let's see, and then. What is that? That's it. Uh, okay. It didn't display, it works. Uh, I know why, because, uh, oh, it's. No, that this is another this one. This is the default one. Yes. So now why what we're why gonna do the, is we're file. gonna change that. Uh, why you name First. it the folder app one dot r? Just name it like uh, app one without. Yeah, dot. let's do that. And then we're gonna move. Um, uh, then. App one, so this is app one dot r. App one, and we're gonna move to app r. It work, hopefully. Uh, it's low, still the same one, so I didn't kill it. Because the file is named app one, you need to rename the file. Yeah, that's why I, that's what I have done here normally. But it's, it's still open. Maybe you need. Yeah, to maybe this is like that. You think? But because there is the this other is one. like the, my old one. Maybe you need to save this one. I need to save this one. I don't know. In app you one, there I have this name. two one. Let's say I have this one, which is the basic version that I do not want anymore. Did I this file? Yes. 
It must be one file named app.r inside a folder, possibly, and you can name the folder whatever you like. Oh, that's why they see didn't found a good file. This is app. The extension is not correct. Yeah, if if you close this file, the, this yes. app, uh, and then you rename it, this it one should be good. good now. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. It works. So you're right. You can't uh, you can't rename it another way. That's strange. Anyway, so this is the basic structure. We start with it. Then she build the layout. Here, I will not spend too much time on it. We already have seen it, so I can just copy past it. But Where this is the... app app one dot r. No, I build the app. Let me check. Let oh, me see. The... Good question. Let's go back so we can close this one. Why did you name it the folder dot r? Well, app... this is a mistake because I thought it built the file, but it built a folder. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. can what... we can change that. Yeah. What? Why don't you name just the 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 folder sure. app one without dot r? Let's see if we can that way. I do not think. Um, one. One. So now I have just app one with app r. Okay. Better. Yeah. Let's go back. Uh, so now we had let now she had a bunch of layouts, which is um, basically not very important. What is uh, what I didn't love because I'm not a good shiny expert is like if you want to add images, you need to add them in a WW uh, folders inside of the app. So let's do that. Uh, they are here probably. So let's move. Uh, WW to app one. Oops. So now in app one, we have WW with the shiny, uh, the mm -hmm. nice shiny PNG. So I will just copy past the full layout now inside of my newly uh, app R version. console then it crashed <laughs> console does not like when i do that Consent. Consent. maybe maybe i should close the oops So let's go. No, this is not the correct one. So let's me go in Ape, this one. Insert, can I copy past everything into that? Yes. Save it. Shiny. Run up. And uh, I need to specify the past, which is app one now. Do I need to say, specify the past, you think? Let's try if I just do this. Yes, it works. And it finds the image. So this is some things that I didn't know, like if you want to add file image and stuff like that, you should build a repository, www. And I assume it's make it easier also when you port it to behind an Apache servers. Yeah, you can even just run the app from the the viewer the the um, like like the as a, just as the same when you render a, a, an R Markdown document. You oh yeah, just, you can yeah, you, can you can like uh, I can use like the reload yeah. app and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. because you have mm -hmm. uh, the the last line. Uh, of the shiny app, uh, the, there's the command for running the the app in case you click. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. But, uh, I spend less and less time in our studio now 
spend way more time into like just the, the, the shell. So I'm using way more like less as a studio. So I'm using so, less like the, the tool and more like just the console because I don't know. Anyway, so let's go uh, back. But what? I still, okay, I just want to ask based on the image we just added to the shiny app. So is it possible we adjust the like the height or the width of the image? Yes. yes. So, totally uh, with me because like uh, this is the minute, but she do that directly uh, into HTML. Let's go to the book. Uh, the book is here. If you see the code here, so this is okay. like, the, and it's used like, uh, so this is the image, uh, the function here is just the, from the HTML package from R that converts uh, HTML function uh to html um base html so this is base html you, you can write it like uh, except it's like just a wrapper of it like i think it's a package by wicam no let me check that html uh air package and it's loaded by shiny when you uh, it's as a html tool or html i don't remember which one it is Let's go. Uh, no, it's Joy Cheng. Well, it's the, the same crew that Air Studio, I think. This is the Joy Cheng, one of the Air Studio guy. I do. I see Car Carson Silver also. Winston Cheng also. Well, you right. This is basically the. Oh, nice doggy. <laughs> see, see doggy. <laughs> so yeah, it's. I think this is what it does. But we can check it. Uh, let's see, like if we ask images. If I go into my R uh, session somewhere, uh, not this one. I don't know which one can I use. This one? No, this one is. I will close this one. I oh, know. Don't. Don't sell. Let's go into this one. And if I ask, uh, let's library. Uh, library. Shiny. This is like that. It's good, yes. And if I ask find uh, its image, no? I think this is like that with find. See, it's in package shiny. Ah, okay. So this is this is the sh uh, I was wrong. This is loaded by shiny. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so good question, Femi. So you can set up the side of the image here. Okay. So now uh, let's go back to the workflow. So she's basing like basic build layout. That's what we have here. And uh, now she's gonna read data. Read data, nothing like very uh, fancy. She will just like, we have done that plenty of time here. The only point that I should mention is like she building it outside of the server function. Yeah. Why? Because she wanted to be loaded at the beginning of the, when you load the Shiny app. And so it's loaded uh, when you run the app, not when you call the server, which is basically like uh, you gain, I think you gain, uh, uh, it's good because you load it only once. But if you want to reload it, it will not be reloaded. Uh, it will be, it will be run uh, when you run the app. It will not be run like uh, when you do a call into the servers, which, like, oh, okay, it's it's an advantage in the performance here in this situation. But mm -hmm. I could see other situation when you want the data import. Obviously, when you're gonna up upload it inside of the servers. Yeah, you can even do it outside. Yeah, that's what she does. On a, uh, another file and then sort the file? Yeah, so that, oh. that's the same ID. Okay. Uh, yeah, so basically, like, if I go to my uh, my sh my my shiny, uh, where's my, sh the one that I'm building here? This is this one. Can I stop it? Uh, so basically, she's calling it here. Let's go here. Mm -hmm. Let's go. The path will not be correct. Let's see if the path is correct. 
uh, no. I am working in, I'm work, there's two weeks I'm working on Mac, Mac and so my, and so like now I'm on, I'm on the PC and my, my shortcuts are bad. <laughs> uh, so let's move the data here. So the data here. So we we'll see. We should copy uh, data to uh, F1. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, F1 and do not have the data. Oh, it wasn't data. LS, data, so omitting directory. Oh, sorry. With F1. Okay, that's good. I, I, so I have the data. Let's see if I go back and well, we have to save it, no? Okay, it's doing like the loading, but it will not change the shape of the app because we have not do nothing into it. A lot of warning, by the way. Uh, okay, I will stop listening to it. Let's go into the books. Adding good parts. Well, here nothing to be new. Data table, I think we have already done it. D graph is new, so we'll spend a bit more time into it. And leaflet is not new, so I will go quickly into it. Like if we go to my, so she's basically adding all this layout and she will just add them like by orders and you structure them like that. So yeah, this is just output the table. This is, so you put into the UE the output you want and you put into the servers or you produce the, the, the object you want to render. And uh, data, data, it's like, uh, this, is, this is like, if you check, it's, it's produced by uh, DT. So it's not a shiny uh, function. Let's go back. So we are in table using DT. So the digraph is the new stuff. Like we should spend a bit time on it. So digraph uh, in the UE will produce a new uh, output we haven't seen, which called digraph outputs. Uh, by the way, you can check all the HTML widgets are probably here. And you have a lot of widgets. And uh, let's see where well, the R showcase maybe. And you have like all the widgets, so leaflet is the one we know already. Data is, data is not even here, but digraph is a famous one that allow you like to do stuff like that. Zoom in, zoom out, and uh, adding like uh, this this top like uh, this top showing like the value of it. Uh, but it need let let's go back to the book. It need to be an XTS object. So we'll, you will need uh, to load the XTX package also, XTS package. And uh, there's a bit of transformation that's kind of a hack here. That's basically the uh, XTS need to be date time for date formats. And what we have in our data is years. I think there's another way of doing that. Like, so she's basically pasting, uh, you know, like the years. Uh, to the beginning of January. So it's kind of hackish this way. I don't know if you have seen it, but, and she do that in the for loop. But for here, like nothing really like new or difficult to us. So this, I was curious. I do not know if, if it's needed, but this is nice. Oh, it's probably like to initialize the loop. Anyway. 
And then uh, this is the die graph and you, this is the die highlights function. The only part that I found difficult and I will not be able to do it by myself is this part. See, apparently into the die uh, highlights, which came from the die graph package, you have, uh, it's, it's let, let's do it this way. Let's uh, go into loading it. Uh, where is my, uh, not here. Let's do it this, this other way. I should load this one. Uh, so I, let's uh, load it. So this will probably not work, but let's see. Nope. I copy it, please. Five, two, four. The scale on top. Okay, data, data. Do I have like that into my data repository? I still have it, so it should work. Not loaded, data is not loaded. So I guess I need that first. Okay, let's see if I'm more lucky. Yep. And I do not load a library XTS, so it cannot do it. Did, did some of you have tried like the forecasting stuff and stuff like that? The forecasting package and uh, time series data. If you, if, you, if you work with time series data, this is a, a common format, but I do not work too much with it. And it's working. Okay, then we just gonna use the digraph package. And uh, I will just go this way, straight into this one because this is the difficult part. So she exports into a D1 object that we'll check. Oh, I do not even have my writer. Let's load a library, a library. Deploy have it, no, I think independency. Then I need library library. Yep. Okay. Now we have everything. So let's in, let's inspect like this D one object. Whoa! Well, see. So it's not a bunch of, it's a very complex object that's basically store like every data, every time series, everything. Uh, if we kind of, uh, let's do, um, uh, let's do str d1, it's, I think it's max level, no? If we ask we one, okay. Then you see like it up, it stored the data first, then it stored like optional information. And inside of X, we can also save CSS value. And basically inside of it, we can use uh, CSS if you know it. I do not know CSS, <laughs> but that's very nice. So it's very powerful. I just like, I, I do not know it. So, uh, so inside of your uh, DYR digraph objects, if I, if I let me, I think it's a digraph object. So if I do class, die one. Yeah, it's a digraph and an HTML uh, widget object. So inside of it on X, you can add an attribute called CSS 
that will uh, allow you to use CSS. And this will allow you to customize the legend accordingly to your moving, um, the moving mouse. Let's do that. You will see, uh, let, let's do it without it and let's do it with it. So you can see the change of it. Here, let's G1, uh, let's export that. Do you see it? It's loading. See, it's it's nice already, but it's loaded a lot. So if we go back now, add the this stuff, and we load D one. Copy. So this is something that I will not know. Uh, let's put it here. No, <laughs> wrong keyboard. Uh, and then, so see the difference, it just load the top one. If I go to the one below, it will just add it. Did you see on the corner? I can, can I increase the size of it? Yes, it will be. See, yeah, it's blue because I'm on the blue curve the Kuya Yoga, it's, it has a lot of pollution. It was the county with lots of factory. No, it's not, it's the state natural park. If I go to Hamilton, it's become green also. If I go to uh, Franklin, like just the color change and you just display the, um, by the way, I think I see where I live. Lauren, I'm living here. So that's it. So, and if we go like to the other one, see it, have, it display all the dots at the same time. So this is something that I learned and I shouldn't. Oh, did you get me? Am I here? Do you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Well, this is like when the microphone change, it's so for some reason, sometimes it changed, it can't get it and the Zoom doesn't like it. Okay, let's go back to uh, leaflet. I will, uh, I will go like, I will, Continue sharing my screen, maybe. Where is where is yeah. Doom? For making mermaid, use dig oh yeah, use diagram directly. Good point, uh, Frederica. But I think in Quarto you do not even need it. You can just use like uh, an engine mermaid. Uh, in Quarto, like I think it's by default. You can just use like you know, uh, I I'm not a Quarto expert, but you can just use the mermaid engine. Specify it like when you use R or Python engine. And it's displayed directly. Uh, okay, let's share screen again. Share, share. Okay, so different. I will not go into it because we already have done plenty of, of time. Um, uh, just jump to reactivities. So let's let's go back into like the workflow. So she's basically building the whole layout without interactivity, without reactivity. Then when the whole layout is built with one data set, she's adding reactivities. Here, there is nothing like magic to it. We already have seen plenty of time. She will just use a select input where you can select years and already set up the, the, the years. And then into die graph, she will add it. Uh, where is it? Uh, here, you have like the, the input variable here, where before it was, let's go digraph. Where is the, see, it was specified just by the, the cases. And here now, you can, uh, instead of cases, you have like the, the selected variable from your input. Okay, nothing new. Leaflet that the same. Let's go back uh, where it's done. It's here. In inside the map data. And here also. So we'll not go too much into it because also we are limited. 
So we can, I can copy past everything and check if it's working my crappy app. Where is our here? This, we do not need it. Run the app directly, I guess it works. It's a bit slow. Maybe if I open in browsers, it's still a bit slow. See, no, she added just these two uh, case and population and years. And now if I select the population, Let's see, like, I can't do select the population. I just, oh yeah, just have the very, the, the whole population. It's, it's, can I, I'm at the, oh yeah, that's it. No, I have to zoom in. Well, it's not very, it's a bit, okay. So we are in Columbus, it's not the good place. Here we are. So if I want the number of, Cases or the world population. Let's see. Yeah. Well, it's big. You probably need to adjust the numbers, I think. And the years. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And the tables probably adjusted. No. Or oh, the table didn't get like uh, interactivity, I guess. So it's just like the the map and um, the, let's see. I guess it's more interesting than the overall population. I we didn't update the digitable. I think we didn't add it interactivity into it. Well, you can check it, but let's do that. Let's see. No, not this one. This one. Let's see. So it's DT uh, in the server side. Where is the server? Yeah, just render data. No, um, no reactivity added. Okay. So now this is where the interesting part add. So let's go back to the flow chart. Now that she have like a basic layers, she's gonna uh, instead of loading the data, uh, uploading it, and obviously reading it, but like. Uh, and we will see uh, when you upload data, if you did not upload anything, you have nothing on your map and she will show like how you can uh, correct that. Okay. So let's go back to the uh, book. Uh, so, in, so you will have two stuff to change. And obviously we are using two kinds of data. We need a shape file for the map. And we need uh, the number of cases. The number of cases will be a CSV file and the shape files, the common uh, framework. So in UI, we will add a noble, uh, um, an input data function and two of them because we need to add the CSV and we need to add the shape file. One thing it's worth mentioning is like, the shape file and the CSV need to be the same shape, the same structures than the one we use in the read data. And then on the server size, no data will take the reactivities of the um, of the CSV we have added. And map will take the reactivities of the um, the shape file we added. You need to basically add well, uh, this kind of trick is also like, uh, I didn't know. You need to kind of tell, well, where is it? While for whatever reason, you do not need it for the UI. I think it's because shape file, you are not reading just one, we are reading a bunch of them. Yes, that's it. And then uh, you read it in your temporary directory file. So 
So this is like this part was a bit like uh, it's a bit complicated. I think if you instead of loading a shell file, if you use like maybe GeoJSON in other file, you will maybe save uh, some of this uh, difficulty. Oh no. No, that's sorry, my bad. To read the shape file with read OJR function, when files are uploaded with file input, they have different name for the one in the directory. We must first rename file with the actual name and then read the shape file with read OJR. Okay, so I misunderstood. I never uh, I tried that. So some of you have tried it or not? I guess not. So using file inputs, uh, you should uh, rename it for the correct name. That's the file I uploaded with name like that. And see that in the shape file format, they all need to be the same name. If not, read OJR will not be able to read it. But as I said, you can avoid that if you save a GeoJSON or a Geo, uh, or Geo package, because Geo package and GeoJSON just one file format. You will not be using read OJR, you will just read, read SF instead and uh, you will avoid the trouble. So this is like, uh, this is something like shape file uh, and force you to do, I think. And then you just change uh, in the server side, you, you put the correct uh, data, that's the similar, similar one. Does not change anything. If you do that, when you load it, and if you have not loading anything, you will have this error message on your three renders. Uh, because obviously you have not loading anything. You are sharing something in chat, Frederick. Do I have the chat somewhere? Chat. More. Where is the chat? Chat here, yeah. For oh, making a mail match in our mind. Okay. Uh, so what you should do is use rec in style. Uh, when you, you wrap inside of your input with rec. So instead of inputting like directly input file data, you just use the rec. Let's see, let's, let's see rec. It's a Chinese function. And it ensures that values are available before proceeding. And if it's not valuable, uh, the operation will stay silent and you will have, not have this error message. It will not run it. It's kind of if does exist. And this is basically the, the same example. Yeah, this, exist. yeah, this right. is it, that that function uh, make 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 sure that uh, the uh, the things that you want to to run will be running when you call it, and yeah. not by itself. So it's a requirement or something like that. So check uh, check for required values. Yeah, so the value is not here because we needed added it, so it did not run. So you do not get an error message. Mm -hmm. This is my understanding. Okay. And that's it. This was the only missing value. Uh, what you should do. Um, is checking data I uploaded before creating a map. I think like here, uh, I will say like you should either, I, I do not know. I, I, I'm feel conflicted about this step. Uh, because like basically you need to input value in the correct format. If obviously if uh, nothing is, is done before, you will have, it will not work. But like if even if like for example the let's say like someone is uploading data and the case they forget the s at the end of population they add the s they will not be able to read the data I mean they will be able to read the data but not displayed correctly because you are calling it by the name of it so the CSV and shape you are need to import need to be correctly uh, at the same format to my understanding. So I think like and so I think like as a before running the app, you should build the first shiny app that check it. Like does the file you are importing uh, have the right uh, format? Then you can process. 
but if not, you should like uh, just. I mean, yeah, you should. Uh, if I was tasked to build that, I will build it in two ways. So that's it. So that, uh, because like you never know what the user will put, especially like shape file format or CSV. Like this is not constrained format. You can put whatever you want inside of it. Like let's say the, the common stuff we have like in Europe. Uh, or is it in same in Italy or I don't know in France? Comma separated value by default are, se are, are separated by semicolon. Don't know if it's the same in Italy. If if you ex if you export a CSV in 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 France, it yeah. will be separated by semicolon. So you have like uh, if you use the read, I think if you use the read underscore CSV from the reader package, it will avoid the trouble. It will notice that the the separators are semicolon and not uh, colon. Mm. But if you use uh, read CSV, it will fail. So this is a common issue. Like you should check before importing. I think you should build a small check, like maybe a small shiny app that just check what you are importing before trying to plotting it. Mm -hmm. So we're building it two step. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that was it. Uh, that's uh, well, we can check quickly, but like. The this is surveillance uh, pack. It's just like how to install it, uh, and it's very nice. I think Perica, you tried it before. You can download a bunch of data, generate like all the. Um, you can check like what you want into your report, and it, it exports the report. It exports everything, but I feel like I don't know. I do not think like uh, it's nice, but. Um, It's maybe, I don't know, I don't like, uh, I do not know it. Anyway, so it's the end of this book. What do you think about it? What's your points? We have like just a few minutes, but I would like to spend a bit of time on that. Sorry, like for my lack of preparation, this one, but I was hurry, 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 and along with two kids. Okay, uh, my thoughts about this book is uh, that, that it's very nice. So, yeah. And uh, obviously, you need to, to spend a bit more time if you like, like mentioning that uh, uh, some knowledge is required for some yeah. chapters more than uh, other things. Uh, but um, I think it gives you some tools to use for making this type of analysis. And with case studies uh, as examples that are very useful yeah. because then you can just to this argument I agree with you the yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah uh I will go then I will uh, provide I will let her uh, say something <laughs> I will say like uh, I will say like uh, on the positive point I like it that it go it start with mark with uh, mark down it's too shiny it looks for like, like it's it's very broad scale like, and then you have like very specific scaling to the analysis. So all of that, I think it's great. And I agree with Federica, case studies were great. Like uh, there are real cases, you know, not just like, uh, I don't know, some penguin stuff. I, I like penguin, but like, uh, there are like real research papers that were used. So I agree with Federica on that. I, on the negative parts, I still think like it's just an introduction. So it's a good introduction, it's great introduction, but then uh, it's a bit too, uh, it provides receipt that I will need to explore a bit more, like to be, uh, let's say, my, uh, my own cook. I don't know if it makes sense, yeah. but uh, I would have like to, but uh, yeah, I agree with you, it's a great introduction book. And uh, that's it, I will film your take now. Okay, I think it's a, to me, it's a very good book because uh, I think, uh, what I love about the book is that they give us like a case study and they take us through a walkthrough uh, step by step on how we can tackle that problem and we, uh, at the end we are going to resolve it. I think it's a very good book because reading the book, I think I learned uh, a lot about spatial modeling, 
and about Shiny also. I think it's a, it's a good book. Yeah, yeah, you, you mentioned a good point. Like it's a very step by step, step by step, and all the steps are very well. This, this, um, bring they bring all, yeah, the, the, all the steps are very like good. Uh, I think like it was very like precise step by step. There is a lot of stuff that I do not understand still the penalized <laughs> uh, priors, PC priors, and stuff like that. But you know, this is food for thought. Like, let's say, no, I know that it exists and I can like investigate more. I still think in la, in like what we learn also uh, is still new and uh, it will be improved time, uh, time uh, like, you know, when other people will like work not only academic, more software developers will come into it, will improve it, use what's inside of it, it will become more accessible also. That's my, uh, my thoughts. Um, I learned also like, uh, but because I was also watching like other video for the violence, this whole idea of doing neighbor, you know, uh, in a proximity by uh, checking what is the neighbor of it, what we've done like in the beginning when it was like error of spatial data, you know, you are checking like if it's the, the relationship between the first neighbors or the second neighbors. This was new for me and I also really was very interested into it. And uh, something that we try to reproduce, I think. Uh, so uh, this is the last the last yep. session. Congratulations yeah. and thanks for bearing with me all the time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, um, I think I've put my name uh, for chapter sixteen. Oh, you want there to do chapter sixteen? Uh, I think we're good. We don't need it. Yeah. No. In fact, so I just uh, uh, take it off. I will I will tell John like we do not need like to to go through the chapter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. And hopefully I will be able to see you in your computation with R. Like yeah. one of the yeah. stuff that we should add also is this book use uh, the whole all R framework. It's use SP a lot, which is good and bad. The good point is like, well, you know, SP is still used a lot in a lot of package. The bad point is it will not, it shouldn't be used anymore. You should use SF or Tira. Okay, I would like to ask like the geo computation. Uh, when are we starting uh, that book club? I don't know. I will take a I will ask to uh, John like if we can do like a small break. And uh, apparently, a lot of people, uh, let's see like what's uh, inside of it. If, if we have some news in the chat. No, no news now. I don't know when John like will start the. I have. Did you have voted for when you want it to be Alwa Femi? You said. Did you vote on the shiny app? Did you say when you? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so I don't know when we will start it. Uh, I'm just like you. Uh, John will stop. I mean, uh, I will check the sign up uh, on Saturday. So you check the sign up two days and see like uh, how we deal with it. Okay, no problem. Uh, and yeah, Jakub uh, told me like she wanted to be there sometimes. So we'll maybe have him uh, on the book club, depending when it is and where it is. We'll maybe do two cohorts, I feel. Maybe a European time zone and maybe an American one. I will not do both. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so we'll see. Hopefully, uh, we'll, we'll start it and we can see each other. I will try. I'm, I'm nearly like done also like the, the package one. I don't know if you are doing it. It's a good book, by the way. I will, yeah, I'm with Alwa Femi on it. So uh, I think we have just one month to do it, no? Okay. And then, I don't know. I will probably start another one. Two book club is good. I'm sure it's too much for me. <laughs> okay, well, thanks everyone. Hopefully I can see you like, uh, and yeah, if you go to Chicago, uh, Federica for the posit, you, maybe I, hopefully I can see you there. Okay. okay. I look forward to it. I Bye. look forward. Bye everyone. Okay. Bye. Bye everyone.